You are now watching the official YouTube channel for the largest basketball manager game in the world. Join at buzzerbeater.com if you think you can beat the buzzer. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to Bubbles Buzzer Beater, the official Buzzer Beater YouTube channel. Today I wanted to do a part two version of a video that was very popular on the uh, channel. And I'd like this to become uh, sort of a running series of videos that I can do, you know, every couple of weeks with fun, interesting, would you rather questions. So I'll link the first video in the description box. Um, if you haven't seen that, there are some really fun would you rather questions on that one. But in today's video, they're going to be completely different would you rathers. And uh, many of these are pulled from the buzzer beater discord where I asked managers, you know, what are some fun, interesting, would you rather questions related to buzzer beater? And uh, there were some very good ones. So if you have one of your own that you want to submit, just comment down below in the comment section, the would you rather question, or you can always DM it to me on discord as well. So starting with the first one, the question is, would you rather only be able to have players 23 or younger on your roster or 36 and older on your roster? And I think uh, it's an interesting question because there's a lot of variables to it. So first thing is thinking about, okay, 34-year-olds start to skill drop in buzzer beater, which means many 36-year-olds are already regressing in skill. So um, the, they might start the season with a $120,000 salary per week, and you know they're pretty good players, but even with career extension, you'll still see a couple of drops throughout the season and they might not be worth their salary by the end of the season. With that being said, the 23-year-olds, many of them aren't going to be capped, and many of them aren't going to be trained to their full capacity, to their full potential yet. Um, so it's kind of a uh, balancing of, do I want to have a better team to start the season and slightly worse team to end the season? Or would I rather have a team that's younger, might not be as skillful as the older players, but I can actually train them throughout the season to get them better by the time playoffs come around. Um, I personally lean more towards the 23-year-olds. Um, many of you might know I, I don't like rostering even 34-year-olds on my team. So the 36-year-olds is definitely one where it's like, I'd rather pass on that. Um, have a couple players who maybe aren't um, built for total skill points and instead are a little bit more of like a, a donkey build. So like just high big skill points and, and lower guard skill points. Um, but I think the 23 year olds, you just have a little bit more potential and a little bit more room to grow that team throughout the season. Um, and also I think they will be a little bit more cost efficient as well. So I would go with the 23 year olds, but I could see an argument for either. The next would you rather is a, a very straightforward one, but one that I could see different managers having different answers for, and this is, would you rather win a cup or a top league championship? And for me, I would rather win a top league championship, uh, mainly because I think it's a better reflection of who the best team um, in your country is, because you're going up against, you know, tons and tons of other uh, top league um, opponents. And I think the championship is just a better reflection of I was the best team in my country for this season. The cup is also a, you know, incredibly hard feat to get as well. Um, and I think this is because there's a lot more randomization to it. So you might have an easier path. You might have a harder path. You might run into a, uh, a fellow League One opponent during the third, fourth game. Uh, you might have, you know, never run into one until the uh, semifinal of the uh, cup. So I think the cup is hard to do, but it's not as good of a reflection of who's the best team. And uh, it's almost more of a question of who had a good path and who made most use of their path. So I'd go with the top league championship for that. The next one we have is, would you rather an elite small forward trainee be six foot five or 196 centimeters or six foot eight? 203 centimeters and small forwards are always interesting to me because a lot of times it depends you know what does your team look like around them so I'm treating this as like um, the small forward trainee in a vacuum like if everything else is constant which way would you lean um, not thinking about overall team build and 
I think I would personally lean towards six foot eight. And the reason for this is um, mainly just because I think you see a lot less small forward, power forward, hybrid players than you do like shooting guard, small forward, hybrid players. And at six foot five, it's very hard to knock those big skills up a lot. So I'd say six foot five is a little bit harder to train like a true small forward um, while getting all of the guard skills along with it. Uh, six foot eight, I think, is a little bit easier to build a more unique, uh, more useful player who could play small forward or power forward. So I would lean towards six foot eight for a true small forward. Next up, we have a question. Um, this one was another one from the Discord, but would you rather have five guys with 20 outside defense or five guys with 20 inside defense? And for this one, I, I think the main consideration for me um, is going to be outside defense is cheaper than inside defense most of the time. And I also think that outside defense is more beneficial in zone defenses as well. Um, this isn't always the case, and I think, once again, it depends case by case, but in terms of the salary component and in terms of um, having one or the other, I think outside defense is a little bit more valuable than inside defense, um, and you could scheme up more zones and more different defense um, defensive strategies with five guys who have 20 outside defense and, and lower inside defense on the team than vice versa. I think if you're lacking outside defense but have tons of inside defense, that's great. Um, but I'm not sure which defense you'd even be able to make the most use of five guys with 20 inside defense. Next one, it's a, uh, it's a funny one, interesting one to think about. Um, I think you'd kind of be set up for failure in either option, but the question is, would you rather only be able to run Princeton on offense or only be able to run 1-3-1 one, one zone on defense. And I am not a fan of this offense or defense. Um, I'd say I haven't ran either in quite a while. Um, but if I had to choose one that I'm running every single game, every single league game, um, 22 straight, trying to be successful, I would much rather try to make the Princeton offense work um, than I would try to make a team that works with a 1-3-1 one, one zone. Um, the one three one zone is just kind of screwed when you go up against an inside offense. Um, it could be suitable against outside offenses potentially, but once people see you running it, you know, every single game, they're just going to run look inside or low post and probably crush you. Whereas Princeton, definitely not one of the best offenses, definitely not one of my favorite offenses, but I think there's ways to form a team that can, um, play Princeton to an acceptable level, and then you could even go a little bit heavier on a defensive team where hit a couple of threes, play really good defense, you can probably get more wins than you would with a team that has to play 1-3-1 one, one zone. So I would go with having to play the Princeton offense every single game. And then the last one. This one is a, uh, a very interesting one. Um... I think it deals a lot with how patient you are and, uh, you know, how long you expect your, yourself to be on buzzer beater. Uh, but would you rather draft an all-time great or 11 potential 18-year-old and not be able to promote for five seasons or draft the same player with Hall of Fame potential instead of all-time great potential and be able to promote right away? So essentially, if you draft the all-time great version of the player, um, you would not be able to promote. So in the USA, for example, um, the teams start out in Division 4. You would not be able to promote to Division 3 for five seasons. Or would you rather have a really good Hall of Famer training, but you're able to promote right away? And for me, I think this is something where um, not being able to promote or like compete for promotion even um, for five seasons does not sound like very much fun at all. Um, but at the same time, having an all-time great player, um, A, on your team, and B, one that you actually drafted, I think is such a fun, um, rare buzzer beater experience that I would still go for the all-time great player. And then, you know, the 18-year-old uh, the would be able to grow. You could shape the team around him. Knowing that you can't promote means that you could play it very, very slow. 
go for very, very strong trainers. And then by the time that he is, um, what would that be, 22? Um, by the time he's in his early 20s, you could start pushing for promotion and he'd be set up really, really well. And you could solely focus on training one of the best players in buzzer beater. So I would go with the all-time great 18-year-old. Um, if you're a manager where uh, five seasons feels like an eternity because it kind of is, um, and you'd rather just go with the Hall of Famer player uh, and get you know 95, 98% of the same player that you would with an all-time great, I think that also makes sense. Uh, it just comes down to how patient you are, I guess. So those are the ones that I had for this video. And uh, like I said, if you have an interesting one, um, or if you would have answered differently than me in um, on any of these six options, uh, please comment down below where you disagree with me or if you have a fun would you rather of your own.